talk to anybody and everybody about what goes on between you and your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. uh, it's none of their business. Or if you do talk to them, it would be someone who is a very intimate friend and had some need to know. Okay, because somehow or other, you know, it was important. So similarly, those who chant the Maha Mantra are people who have that similar mood or same mood of dancing with Krishna in the forest of Vrindavan, in a conjugal mood. Okay, it's not for uh, you know the broad public, right? It's it's not for uh, it's not something you want to put on the evening news. Okay, <laughs> it's not for public consumption. It's only for those intimate devotees who want to enter into that particular pastime. So, we don't recommend that for uh, wide uh, consumption, but only for initiates, really. Those who are willing to follow our principles strictly and who want to develop a, disciple, a discipleship relationship with our discipline lineage and uh, who are you know, really working towards initiation. That, um, well, Florian, the reason why Iskan spread the mantra all over was that Iskan was running according to a different set of uh, standards and priorities. Iskan had, for example, uh, a whole bunch of residential temples. And if someone comes and lives in one of those residential temples, they pretty much have to follow all the rules and regulations. And they pretty much have to accept the authority of the spiritual master because, you know, they're eating, sleeping, living in his, his properties, uh, in the ashram. But in our preaching mission, uh, hardly anybody lives in the ashram. And so far it's just been me and Uddhava. Uh, and then if you're going to join us, that would make three of us. But still, most of the people that we're preaching to are not living in the ashram. So it's much more difficult for them to follow the rules and regulations or avoid the offenses in the chanting of the mantra. And out of a desire to do good for them, we don't want them to chant with offenses. Because in that case, the benefit of chanting the mantra is it's not lost, but it's delayed uh, until the offenses are cleared. You know that shloka, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Kaibalo. Kalo nashteva 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 gatiranyata. Uh, that means uh, Hare Nam means chant the holy name, right? So it's repeated three times. Now I'm getting to that. You know, it, hold your horses there, young whippersnapper. These young fellers, I'm telling you, you know, kids these days, you just. Anyway, so. Why is it repeated three times? Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama. Huh? It means uh, Hare Nama, chanting the holy name in the offensive stage. Hare Nama, chanting the holy name in the clearing stage. Hare Nama, chanting the holy name in the perfect stage, the offenseless stage. Eva Kevala is the only way to attain liberation. Kalao, in the age of Kali, Nastyeva, Nastyeva, Nastyeva. Again, three times. Nastyeva means there's no other way by karma or material activities. Nastyeva, no other way by yoga uh, or um, you know, mystic powers or stuff like that. Nastyeva, there's no other way by jnana or impersonal liberation based on speculative knowledge and empiricism. Huh? Huh? Nascheva, 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 gatir anyata, to attain the highest destination of life. Huh? So, in other words, we have to clear the offenses against the holy name. And the only way to do that is to live in a very disciplined way under the direction of a spiritual master. And that is best done in an ashram. So there's three, uh, four different kinds of ashrams, the Brahmachari ashram, the Grihastha ashram, Vanaprastha and Sannyasa ashram. And in uh, Brahmachari ashram, the student lives in the house of the spiritual master uh, like a menial servant. 
and has nothing and, and just serves the spiritual master 24 hours a day. Uh, in Grihastha Ashram, the student gets married, lives independently, manages his own affairs, but still dedicates the bulk of his time, resources, and energy to the service of the spiritual master. In uh, Vanaprastha Ashram, uh, someone retires from active occupational duties and they dedicate all their time to uh, sadhana and spiritual advancement. Um, but they're not like a formal renunciant or something like that. And in the Sannyas Ashram, they become a formal renunciant and usually also a guru and they travel around and teach people and stuff like that. So the point is that ISKCON became stuck in that model of recruiting people off the street and bringing them directly into the ashram. So because of that um, ashram environment, they could say to people, well, just chant the Maha Mantra. And because we're basically forcing you to follow all these rules and regulations, then hopefully you won't commit too many offenses. Of course, the offenses are actually not gross, there's more subtle, but still, at least they'll be following, you know, four regulative principles, uh, no meat eating, no intoxication, no illicit sex, no gambling, right? And because of that, uh, they can chant the Maha Mantra safely. Well, we're dealing with a public that is um, you know, not under our control, not living in an ashram, they're completely independent, they can do whatever they like. So, uh, because most people don't have a background in yogic discipline and uh, spiritual uh, principles, it's better that they chant a mantra that is more forgiving of offenses, that is, is not so, the requirements aren't so high. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, uh, their lifestyle doesn't necessarily qualify them for initiation. So unless they're extremely determined, you know, like you are, uh, they're not really going to be following all the principles or getting ready for that initiatory stage of life. Uh, yeah, <laughs> who was that saying that today? Huh? Yeah, we, we've heard that. Yeah, 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 that guy, uh, what's his name? Yeah, it's Maurizio, who is it, from Slovenia, that guy? Before we started the meeting today? Yeah. So, you know, nobody can force you to, to break the principles, it's true. But, you know, how people are affected by their association. And wherever you go in today's world, people are breaking these principles. You know, I mean, you can go even just go down the road, there's a casino where they're breaking them all four at once. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and this is a legitimate business in this material world. So uh, we can understand how degraded this society is, that they don't even understand that the uh, religion stands on four legs. That's why the... Uh, the uh, Bull is the symbol of Dharma because the bull stands on four legs, and those four legs are truthfulness, cleanliness, austerity, and mercy. Uh -huh. So, gambling destroys truthfulness because when you gamble, you have to bluff. And meat eating destroys mercy because when you're eating meat, you have to kill animals, and it's merciless. Uh -huh. Illicit sex destroys cleanliness because, well, anybody can understand that, you know, AIDS and all that stuff. Uh, and, uh, uh, what's it, meeting? And intoxication destroys austerity because when a person is intoxicated, they don't feel like doing any austerity. Uh, they can't understand, They're, they lose their intelligence and they can't understand the concept of taking some trouble now to. Uh, get some benefit in the future. They're thinking, oh, I want release from all my troubles right now. Huh? Is, uh, is illicit sex just sex out of marriage? Outside of marriage or not for the purpose of creating children. Oh, 
Oh, so even if you're married? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the standard. I mean, that's the, we've, you have to understand how far down the slippery slope we have come. Okay? Society is in an extremely degenerate condition right now. So there are spiritual principles about everything, including sex life. But what about like, you know, when the man passed, just that, like, showing that love in a sense? Well, not this, I'm not necessarily <laughs> saying just sex, but I'm saying, you know, like being close to somebody and, you know. Well, I mean, family members are natural objects of affection. Nobody is saying that we should become hard hearted and not love our family members. Huh? But when uh, sex life or the quality of sex life becomes a main.